And I'm back. What do you know? We're here playing Reclaimer Amulet. Currently 3-1 after some bad beats against our Mono White Taxes opponent in the last round. Sorry to tell you, but Leon and Arbiter and um, Aven Mind Sensor, not really the easiest cards to beat, sadly. Maybe we'll face against an opponent who's not playing those cards, though. So let's go ahead and get hooked up for this match, and I will see you guys in the game. All right, we have our match. Playing against Freed Mania. This is one of the guys on the leaderboard. With like a billion trophies. Man, this hand would be great if I had an amulet. Alas, it does not. On the draw, we don't have a turn one green source for a reclaimer either, so I think I'm in a mulligan. This hand's much better, in my opinion. We'll keep. And I guess bottom Radiant Fountain. Vesuv is going to be good if we draw a bounce land because that gives us access to a second one, which guarantees our Titan mana. And we're going to have turn two explore anyways off of this key west, so let's just go ahead and get rid of this Radiant. Now we can see what the uh, what the 5-0 master here is playing. Oh no, is this a druid combo? Oh, they're playing reclaimer of some sort. Could be reclaimer titan. There's a lot of different uh, flavors of reclaimer decks going around. I guess we might as well just throw out this turn one amulet. No big deal. They could be on titan vial. They could be on a reclaimer titan deck similar to the way that we are. Uh, they get a... Reclaimer activation with flagstones, which is pretty good for them. Not gonna lie. Um, we could actually Vesuva their flagstones. How do I feel about that? I don't hate it. Um, I guess before we make that decision, let's uh explore and see what we see. Second amulet, you say. Well, now we can play Garenbrig's second amulet, and then our Vesuva makes Titan mana this upcoming turn if our opponent doesn't go for a Ghost Quarter line, so uh, let's do that. And we can copy whatever we want with this Vesuva. We could even copy Castle Garenbrig, and it'll still make the two mana here, because Vesuva forces itself to enter tap. So, that's interesting. They have second Reclaimer. You got it. They didn't use their Reclaimer the other turn? Did I? Am I missing something? All right, let's do this. Five to make sure we don't have any unnecessary yields set. Okay, so with our Titan, we can haste and attack and then get Valcut and something else, probably Bounce Land, off of the attack trigger and play Dryad and start doing things that way. So, seems like a plan to me. I guess we could be playing into a Path to Exile, but I don't think I'm playing around it. Nah. Well, it's not terribly hard to play around. We can get Valcut and Blue Bounce Land. And pick up a Vesuva. Pick up Vesuva. So we can play it as a copy of a bounce land and be able to have Dryad plus Valakut as a backup plan and still be able to transmute Tolari West. I guess that really is the safest line. I'm going to go for that. Hmm. I suppose we also might have had a line where we could haste as well so float some mana here we might still be able to be able to do stuff because i keep forgetting that there's two amulets in play so if we pick up talari west we can transmute it and still play dryad and have an additional land drop but we won't be able to do anything from there i guess transmuting and getting a second titan here might just be or getting a summoner's pact preemptively it might be the best thing we can do. So let's transmute. We'll get summoner's pact. We'll play Dryad. Don't have any additional lands to play, but that's fine because we have 
all of these things in play already. If our opponent decides to go for a Ghost Court or a Valakut line, that's not going to work out for them because we do, in fact, have a second Valakut, so... I'm really surprised they didn't do this a turn or two ago. So now I'm thinking about it. Since we had double amulet, we could have gotten Hanweir and a bounce land, floated um, three mana off the two of them, untapped both, picked up Talari West, played Dryad, hasted Titan, and attacked, and probably just killed our opponent that turn. So definitely should have thought through that line before we just started playing it out. But I think we'll still be fine here regardless. So not really worried about it. The Ghost Quarter of Alcat. That's fine. Now they don't have Path Up or anything, so we're pretty good to go here. Do we want to pack four and get another Titan into play? I guess we do. We can attack with this one and play another Dryad if we wanted, so. Here he goes. Got Hyper Lethal coming in. Assuming we can manage to do our triggers correctly and whatnot. We can get second Valakut and the Hanweer here and get some Valakut triggers in addition to hasting. So that's what I'm going to go for. It's probably the closest thing to lethal. Right, let's just point all the triggers at them, I suppose. I don't really see a reason to do otherwise. <laughs> yep. Like I said, there's a lot of things we could have done that game and not a whole lot of them matter, to be honest. Let's bring in the dismembers. Bring in the gust. Um, Beast Within, possibly. Tracker, possibly. I don't really want to play a super long game against Titan Vial. I think just getting a Titan into play and using it to win is probably our best line to victory instead of trying to play something long and drawn out. Explosives might be good against them. It does kill our own Reclaimers, but I don't know. Similar to last time, I feel like our Reclaimers are better than theirs, so maybe Explosives is not going to be the most impactful here. I don't know. I'll go without it. Force hits their Dryad and their Vile, so let's uh, bring that one in. Assuming they are playing Vile. We haven't seen it, but we haven't seen the Amulets or anything like that either, which Force would also hit, so I think Force is going to be a good one here. And that might be all we want, in all honesty. Uh, I think the Explorers are going to be slow and get taxed by Thalia if they keep the Guardian of Thraben in their deck. Don't know if they will. The Juka Bog's probably good against them. I don't think Radiant Fountain will be particularly relevant. Um, we can trim one Summoner's Pact, I suppose, if they have some kind of search hate or something like that. I doubt that they would, though. Maybe it's better to cut a different card. But I kind of like all these cards anyways. Let's submit like this. Interesting. So we don't quite have a turn one Reclaimer here, but we have a Dryad, and after we get it into play, our other castle will be entering untapped. I don't know, though. 
This hand's a little slow, but I don't mind it. They might have Knight of Autumn and such to blow up an amulet as well if we try to mulligan into a hand with amulet, so I'm going to try it. It could be wrong, though. You can also draw any untapped source, and this hand is quite good. We can go Garen Brig into tap Field of the Dead plus Reclaimer into untapped source Dryad Garen Brig. Seems like a decent place to be. And there it is. So, actually, we can play Reclaimer on one here. I don't know if that makes a difference, though. I suppose if we played Garenbrig, we could... No, we excited out all the Explorers, so there's no reason to think about that. Let's, uh... Let's get our Reclaimer into play now, I guess. We'll name Elf. You got turn Reclaimer? Well, I do, too. Although I have to click the mana, unlike you. They have flagstones to go with the Reclaimer, so they're dangerous over there. We've got a Redundant Titan. Okay. Um, Let's play out the field, I suppose, and just pass it back. No reason to attack here, obviously. Reclaimer being an explorer that can then go and search for a field or valley cut is quite good. So, like, just going turn one Reclaimer, turn two Flagstones, being able to activate it is just amazing. It's, like, one of the best things you could be doing with the card. Maybe I should be playing four Flagstones, in all honesty. I'm only playing three at the moment, but it's really hard to find room, in all honesty. That might be an excuse, though. How many lands are we playing? 32? 32 is a lot of lands. Our opponent's just passing with all their mana up. I guess they want to activate Reclaimer here. Huh. Can't play Dryad this turn. So, let's just do this. No! I should have done them in the opposite order so I could activate Reclaimer. Whatever. I'm not playing great these last two matches here. Not gonna lie. That might have been the difference between having Titan this upcoming turn and not having Titan, because we could have searched for Flagstones, and then next turn sacked Flagstones and gotten a Bounce Land plus a Temple Garden. That would have been three mana, plus a land for turn to activate Garenbrig. Yeah, I think we might have had a Titan this upcoming turn if, if we had not missed the Reclaimer trick. No, we would have had to sack a land, though, so maybe not. Hmm. If we spike a bounce land, no, we still won't be able to play Titan here. I guess we really wanted this cavern to be an actual forest. Maybe maybe leading Garenbrig into Reclaimer plus Field into turn three Cavern Souls still would have been better. Oh well, live and learn, I guess. Okay, well, let's play this Garenbrig. And we can sacrifice, we can tap to sacrifice the cavern, get a uh, bounce land plus a, a, um, uh, what is it called? This one, Flystones. And be able to play Golos this turn. So we're kind of playing to like a Aven Mind Sensor or something if they have it, but I don't really think that they will. Oh no, that's right. We're not getting to search for a second land. Well, that's fine. Let's just get Flagstones and play Dryad. You know, play badly, get rewarded, etc., etc. Let's just hope that we can make it out of this alive and our opponent doesn't manage to find a Dryad here. Okay. My opponent has slowly climbed their way up the ladder to getting Field of Dead online. If they want that. 
I do see these scattered groves as well. I've seen the, I've seen this one in a previous deck list before. I don't mind it. I'm actually wondering if it might be worth playing an amulet over one of these Temple Gardens. I don't know, though. Temple Garden acting as an untap source for amulet or reclaimer on one seems a little bit better to me, though. Is that the fourth flagstones? Yep. <laughs> Boil. Okay, we got got. Hey, at least we get to search for our land. Yes. If we find a balanced land, we're still not in terrible position. We can play out a Golos and then play Titan the turn after, so... Well, we may not get rewarded here. I think that we might have had a Titan out by now had we made the correct line of play from the very beginning. Playing the... um. Ca cavern on turn one to play reclaimer out that uh, probably was a trap playing reclaimer on one seems like the best thing you can do but having that as an untapped source on turn three for the dryad like i had initially said seems like it would have been a better line our opponent's going to get all the valka triggers too so our dryad's about to die and things are quickly going out of control I guess they can't kill our Reclaimer. So if we draw an untapped land, especially a Flagstones of our own, then we might be in decent shape. We'll see. I don't know if they would have another land drop to play this turn, so if they do, then our Reclaimer is going to die as well. And they I don't feel like they would be pointing a Valakite trigger at the Reclaimer if they didn't have another land drop, so uh, I feel like they do have another land drop. If they didn't, they would probably have three clues as well. No, they have three clues, so maybe they don't? Okay, they do. <laughs> well, I don't think that we have anything that lets us win here. Suppose if we drew untapped land into bounce land, we could pack for Azusa and play bounce land twice and get a Golos in play. I don't know if that's going to be good enough, though. In all honesty, we're probably just dead to second Valakut here. Or we could just draw Azusa. All right, so let's go to game three. Well-deserved loss there in the face of poor sequencing. Ooh, don't know if I want to change anything about this. Explosive still doesn't seem very attractive, although Explosives on three seems to be very good against them, but... Regardless, I don't think it's worth it. Don't know if we want to do anything about Boil either. There's not much we can do. I guess Gus does hit Boil, interestingly enough. I'm just going to run it back. We will play first. <laughs> and this hand is interesting to say the least. We have a turn one amulet, which is great. We have interaction. We have a force to blow up a vial or a dryad. We'd have to pitch a card for it, but we still need to, do to draw a bounce land. If we draw a bounce land, then we might be fine. Like, we could draw any land plus a bounce land and then be able to get to Golos, and from there be able to get to Titan. So I'm going to try it. So admittedly not fantastic, but turn one amulet seems like it should be fantastic against them, so they could, like I said, just have a knight of bottom ready to blow up this amulet, but we'll see. If they do, this hand becomes significantly worse, but we have lots of ways to slow them down, so here goes. We'll pass it back. All right. Grazer's not fantastic here, I'm not gonna lie. We'll play out this T West and I guess just pass it back. Now if we draw a bounce land, we have Golos on turn three actually. <laughs> Alright, come on deck. Bounce land off the top. Let's go. Bounce land. Valakite. That's not the worst. 
Now if we draw a bounce in without doing any grazer shenanigans, we get Golos. So, I mean, we're both just like uh, sitting here staring at each other. Don't know how to feel about it. Our opponent could be playing Damping Sphere as well. That's something to be cognizant of. But luckily, we can pitch our Grazer Buddy here to force a Vigor and be able to kill a Damping Sphere. So, could be fine. Call. Okay. I wonder what this is going to get. I guess Dryad, perhaps. We shall see very shortly. Or maybe Excavator, if they are trying to establish the loop. We do have a Dismember to cut that off. Knight of Autumn. Okay. That makes sense also. Well, we are losing our amulet, as predicted. Not much we can do about that. Okay. So. We'll just keep trying to draw lands here, I guess. A bounce land would still be good, just because it lets us hit five mana pretty naturally. Crumbling Vestige. Um, we should play that one out, because if we draw Vesuva, then we'll be able to cast Golos, so. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and play it. And we gotta pass back. Uh, make a green. Do we want to throw out this Grazer just to block? I guess not. Having Grazer to pitch to the Force seems more relevant than just blocking the two damage, so. Tracker. Okay. That one, not good news for us. Ghost Quarter. Okay. We could dismember the tracker and give our opponent the option to Ghost Quarter themselves for an additional clue. Alright, let's go ahead and throw out this dismember now. That way we can top deck any on tap land and slam Golos. Seems like a good thing to do. Come on, untap land. Black stones is fantastic. All right, so here's our five mana boy, bridging the gap to Titan as intended. Yes. So what's the best land to get here? I guess a bounce land that makes some sense, although that plays into their ghost quarter kind of poorly. Could actually get a. Flagstones. I don't think that really does anything for us. We need another green source so we can cast Titan. So that's for sure. We could just get Garenbrig. I'm gonna go with Garenbrig. If we that way, if we top deck another green source, we can activate Garenbrig, get Titan. Eh. Or nah. There's no way that we could take advantage of that. I guess we would have to draw an amulet for a Titan to be able to get haste available here. So. Interestingly, interestingly enough, we could have gotten Bajuka Bog so that if we draw any land, we can activate Golos. <laughs> Don't know if that's going to be a relevant line, in all honesty. I think getting Titan into play is going to be a relevant line. Ghost Quartering Rest here is interesting. We'll get our differently named Forest. Excavator, perhaps? Well, we do have one more basic, so they're probably going to hit our Valcut, I would assume. And we'll get our next forest in line, and we'll slam a Titan, and we'll see if that's good enough. I get the hunch that it will be good enough. Especially since they don't have path up. They could still have path regardless, but the Ghost Quarter hitting a blue source, so we can't transmute to Ari West, seems like it might be better for them. So in that case, our, when our Titan resolves, we might actually want to get Double Growth Chamber. I don't hate that. Yeah, let's go for this. Getting Field of the Dead doesn't seem like it's high enough upside, I think. If we had a Breeding Pool in the deck, we could... No, we... We couldn't search for it off Flagstone, sadly, so I guess that doesn't make a huge difference. I guess if we get double Growth Chamber, they can just kill our Talari West with the Ghost Quarter, so 
maybe let's not go with that line. Let's go with the field, actually. Well, we could get Bajuka Bog to start activating Golos here. We have to pay for a pack, but another turn or so down the line, that could be quite relevant. We also know that they have an Excavator in play. So maybe Bog plus Bounce Land to pick up the Bog isn't the worst. Although they'll never not have the Ghost Quarter in play, I suppose. Weird. I don't know. Bog plus Field doesn't seem the worst either. I don't hate Bog plus Field. Let's go for that. Now we have the backup plan of activating Golos. We can play another Five Stones here and get an additional Field Trigger. It seems like something I'm interested in, in all honesty. And we will keep the untapped one, because oh, why not? Ghost Quarter Field. You got it. Uh, let's go ahead and search with this one. And... Still not playing this Grazer out because of the fact that it's Force Fodder. So let's go looking for a Temple Garden. We now have tons and tons of green sources in play to be able to pay our pack trigger. We are one untapped land away from being able to uh, activate Golos after paying for our pack. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. We're two untapped lands away. Ignore me. Doesn't matter. We've got a Titan in play. We've got field, uh, not, uh, field in the graveyard, sadly. But we've got a Talari West at the ready if we're able to transmute it down the line. We've got a Golo, so we can potentially start activating. So, we'll just see what happens here. Okay. Goodbye, Tumble Garden. Might as well not search. Since we don't have another basic remaining. I suppose if they had Dryad, they could cut us down to one green source left, but that is not going to quite cut it. Okay. Looking for a path, I assume. This Golo is doing a secret lot of work. They do have the path, so we'll search. Oh, wait, that's right. We don't have anything to search for. So we will not search. And now we're going to be pretty happy that we got this black source. If we can make it good for one Golos activation, that will have made it all worth it, I think. Okay. Yes. Suva is a pretty good one. That gives us an additional green source. Yeah, let's just copy the Garen Brig here. We'll swing out. Do we swing with the zombies? I guess not. Yeah, let's just swing with the Golos. Our opponent may, it, may not realize that we can activate Golos. We'll see. Dryad, okay. We'll probably force just the Dryad so they don't get a second Ghost Quarter activation here. I think the Garen Brig. Yeah, let's definitely force this. Now we get a guaranteed Golos activation since they can't get their Ghost Quarter back again. And we'll just hope that that does something good. And you may play them. So we can actually play a land off of the Golos as well. If we hit a land, so. Is it this turn? Does it say anything about the timing? And I think it doesn't change the timing. So if it's a sorcery, we still have to cast it during our main phase and whatnot. Let's uh go for the value, you guys. Let's activate this Golos. Let's go. Uh, 
Oh, right. In in business. Uh, we'll cast the Dryad. We'll play the Growth Chamber. And we'll send a trigger at this Ramanop. Get out of here. A hey, Golos activation winning the game for the four and one. Now that is content, guys. That is content. Remember when I was like, let's just go ahead and uh, fetch out this little innocuous bajuka bog here. You know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, that's great. That's great. All right. So, how do I feel about the deck list? I don't know. I like it. Obviously, it's uh, good enough to go four and one, despite me making. Obvious blunders, in my opinion. I do want access to a fourth flagstone somehow, but I don't think I want access to a 33rd land. Just in principle, that just sounds like way too much to me. I don't know. I don't know what we could cut is the problem. I We could move a cavern to the board, I suppose, and make room for a fourth flagstone that way. I do like having access to the second cavern in the main, though, but maybe it's fine. Maybe it's fine. And then I guess that way we would cut the Aether Gust. And run it back like this, yeah. I do like the one Golos. There were several times where it made a significant impact, one of which was our opponent discarding our Golos and leaving us with a Titan and getting blown out because in the long run we were able to get the Titan anyways. And then there's obviously what we were able to do that game, having the Golos to bridge the gap between our turn, you know, three and turn, you know, titan eventually so our titan turn eventually like having golos to fill that gap was really important there and being able to get some card advantage and activation out of golos like i mean we did hit a dryad admittedly which was crazy but there's a lot of hits that we could have gotten that were insane there uh primeval titan being one of them so what can you do what can you do anyways that's enough talking i like the list let me know what you guys think what do you guys think about the list? Does it need a second Field of the Dead somewhere? Uh, do we need a fourth basic land? I have been missing the, the additional forest here, actually, believe it or not. So, I don't know. That might be interesting. I wish we could make room for a third and fourth Garenbrig as well. There's just not enough room for all the lands this deck wants to play, but I also want to have enough business, you know what I mean? We already got some hands that were like <laughs> five lands and two action spells, and you just get turn one discarded, and it kind of sucked. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what changes would you make to the deck? Fond of this Golos, obviously. MVP for this particular match. Yeah, I will see you guys for the next league. This is Red Face Menace. Signing off.